Hey everybody, my name is R.C. Concepcion. I am a photographer, director, author, and professor at the Newhouse School of Public Communications at Syracuse University. Today I wanted to talk to you about the BenQ PhotoView Monitor SW272U. Now, on the point of disclosure, I do a lot of work with BenQ. I am a BenQ ambassador. I do a lot of research for them. I take a look at their products. I do a lot of training with them. They support a lot of the training that I tend to do outside of the class. And in the process of that, we go back and forth on talking about suggestions suggestions for monitors and things that we think that are going to be good for the photography community. I wanted to be able to talk a little bit about what they've done here with the 272U and why I think that this is important when you are working with the work that you're doing. One of the first standout features is that it has this smooth matte display. I'm a very big fan of the matte display because I think it really shows off the work that you're doing without a lot of glare and reflections. I can take this monitor and kind of tip it from one side to another and the views are really soft and consistent. I've got a lot of studio lights here and they don't reflect off of this. So considering the fact that you're gonna be spending a lot of time taking a look at this, you want the experience of the work that you're doing to be good, right? Like I wanna be able to look at this and go, all right, well, this looks nice. It almost kinda of looks like artwork as you're working with this. So that I think is pretty cool. But the matte screen's just one component of it, right? It's sharp, it's bright, great, got it. But the color support in this, I think is really important for us to be able to talk about. The SW272U can support 99% of Adobe RGB and P3 and 100% of sRGB color spaces which I think give you a great amount of control with the work that you're doing. But chances are there are people that are looking at this and I'm like, oh, what does that mean? Like, why, why do I even care about most of that stuff? Think of it this way. When you're looking at a color space, right, that's the available amount of color that you have inside of a file. Think of it as almost kind of like crayons. And again, this is gonna be a 35,000 foot overview, very oversimplified. But think of sRGB as like 100 crayons, right? Imagine making something with 100 crayons. You'd have a specific amount of color that's available to you. Then what happens if you make something with 200 crayons, right? There's more colors that are available to you. Then what happens if you make something with 400 crayons, right? The more colors that are available, the more you'll start seeing gradations in tone and things like that in color, and it's gonna look a specific way. So you can make stuff with either Adobe, RGB, sRGB, DCI-P3, which is usually used for cinema. Sometimes you'll see like Rec 209 or Rec 2020. All those are the amount of colors that you use to work with something. So if you work with something that has a lot of color, but you can't see it on the monitor, then how are you gonna be able to make any of these kinds of corrections? You wanna be able to find a monitor that can support all of that stuff. So having something that could support 99% of Adobe, it can support P3, it can support 100% of sRGB, you're going to see the colors that you have worked with displayed beautifully on screen. That's very important. You want them to be accurate. You want to make sure that what you see is really what you're gonna get when you do that. That's a plus. Other standout features here is that you have this hotkey puck, right? So this puck, now the new one is wireless, which I think is great, right? You can set this down and you can control a bunch of different things here. Like I can control the overall brightness by turning this, but it does have these three buttons that I can use to do something, right? So if I press the number one, notice that I have it set now to a specific mode, M-Book mode. I hit two, it goes to sRGB, I go three, and it goes to Rec. 709. So that's for a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, Rec. 709, if I'm doing video, you have Adobe or sRGB for any kind of graphics work that I'm doing, and then I have M-Book mode. And this is something else that they add inside of here that I think is great. The M-Book mode for this monitor emulates a lot of what your MacBook Pro looks like, right? So if you have a Mac screen and you're used to that looking a specific way, you can just automatically switch to your M-Book mode, and now that will mirror what you're doing on this Mac, which I think is great, right? These buttons can be configured to be able to do different things, right? Like if I set the top button, I could set the different inputs. So your ability to be able to switch between different modes as you need those projects, I think is something that's gonna be really good. So that's something that I think is a standout feature. Another thing that I think is really cool is the fact that all of this stuff could be powered by 90 watt USB-C, right? And it's one of those things that when you start looking at it, it's kind of hard, like I don't like having a big mess of cables whenever I'm doing stuff, right? I just want one cable to be able to deal with everything that you need to do. 
putting my laptop down and just connecting one USB-C cable to this, it provides power as well as it connects to your monitor. One cable does it all, right? And you can take these monitors and you can kind of daisy chain them. So that same USB cable or one USB connection to the computer can provide all of these connections for all these different monitors. It keeps the desk clean. It keeps me focused and organized. And to be honest with you, it looks great. You even have an option to be able to do stuff like in paper color sync. Think of it this way. You have a monitor, it's matte, right? So what if you could emulate what it would look like on paper, right? So you can use these profiles, you can use this paper color sync to be able to kind of show you what it's gonna look like on a piece of paper before you actually print. That I think is nice. Another part that I think is pretty cool is your ability to be able to kind of see two different color gamuts on one screen, right? They call it Gamut Duo, and it lets you put a side-by-side, -side, let's say Rec. 709 and sRGB. Put them up on screen, and you can kind of take a look at what it's going to look like in different outputs. When you're doing any kind of color reproduction, or if you're doing any kind of video editing, you want to be able to see what it's going to look like when you send it out. Having the ability to be able to see both of those is a big plus. But I love the fact that it's very minimalistic. I love the fact that it has all of these different types of features, but the most important part for me has to do with that color reproduction. All the bells and whistles are great, but if I can't get it to look at the colors and see the colors that I want within that, then there's no point, right? A lot of the times in photography, you spend so much time looking at your work here, right? Like it's not cameras, it's not lenses, it's not prints, right? Sometimes it's your phone, but largely it's this. So while all of the workflow stuff I think is very, very important, it also celebrates the work that you're doing within that. For more information on this monitor, make sure that you go to the BenQ website at BenQ.com.